another Monica at Home interview. My name is Alexandra, also known as Monica Foster of www.monicaathome.com. And today I have a very special and very brave woman who I admire greatly with me. Her name, well, she's better known as Sunset Thomas, but nowadays she's known as Diane. Welcome to the show, Diane. Thank you very much for coming and being on here with me. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, and I appreciate you having me. I think this is awesome, and it feels good to finally be able to get some good stuff out of that and get out with well, you have so much to express and sh so much to um, share with the audience. You know, um, this is actually going to be quite a long interview. We might, might do this in a multitude of parts, but we are going to start from the beginning. Now, I guess the real beginning of how you and I came to communicate with each other um, has to do with a beautifully written piece by a man, a gentleman, a um, longtime journalist, actually, by the name of Ben Tinsley. Now, from what I recall, the article was written in November of 2014, and the article chronicles your journey um, from leaving the Nevada legal brothel system, specifically Dennis Hoff's brothel, to just regaining your not only your freedom, but your sense of self, your sense of self-worth, and your strength, but you didn't only work in the Nevada brothels, you also um, have an extensive history of working in the pornographic industry. Am I correct in saying that? Yes, that's correct. I actually started in the adult industry first. Okay. I was actually okay. in that industry. Well, you know, what's interesting to me about your journey is that it's your background from working in the pornographic industry that actually helped to build the Nevada brothel system. And um, what really breaks my heart is how badly you were treated by the Nevada brothel system, considering that you brought so much to the table. And to, honestly, if it weren't for you, I don't believe it would be what it is to this day, which is, again, what brings us back to the heartbreak of everything that you've had to go through since leaving that system. I mean, lately, you've been going through Since hell. Diane has left the Nevada legal brothel system, her ex-boyfriend and ex-employer, Dennis Hoff, Nevada legal brothel owner, has stalked and harassed her relentlessly. Dennis Hoff, it seems, has quite the reputation of both talking negatively about and harassing his exes who have left his brothels. That I came across your Twitter as well, and I read some of the tweets about, um, you know, there were very distressing tweets about the stalking and whatnot that you've been dealing with, um, primarily from Nevada legal brothel owner Dennis Hoff, a man who's um, pretty hot in the news right now in regards to the Lamar Odom, um, Khloe Kardashian situation. So, um, you know, before we get into any of that, though, because your, your story is so courageous and, and it's such an intricate story, I, I suppose the first question I'd like to ask you is, um, how old were you when you first decided that you wanted to get into the adult entertainment arena and what part of adult entertainment was your entry point? Actually, I was 18 when I got in. I was married to my first husband at the time, and we actually moved out to Los Angeles. My, actually, what I, my biggest go is I wanted to be a regular model. Okay. That was my dream. That was my go. I was right on runway and stuff like that. I did a lot of stuff at Daytona Beach. I actually was a trophy girl at the Daytona Speedway. Mm -hmm. so that was my hugest go. You know, they could go to Hollywood and be like this famous star this way and model, maybe do B-rated movies, which I did a couple of B-rated movies as well. Oh, okay. I did a point. I was actually in Witchcraft, which was really neat. Got my heart ripped out in the beginning. But I was oh. new. And I was like, hey. So, anyway, times were tough, and uh, we were struggling a little bit. Needed some money, and my husband was doing a little shopping around. And, you know, those little things on the sidewalk that you see, and that you get those little boxes, and they tell you about where to go shoot adult movies and things like that. Right. Well, that's how I started. Okay. You know, to get her off and do the adult stuff. Wow. Okay. Now, how many years were you an active <laughs> movie actress before um, the legal brothel opportunity came about? I would say I was in it for about 10 years before ten I years. got into the brothel. Yeah. And now, I got really famous. Now, would you say that your experience um, as a pornographic actress, was it exactly what you expected? Um, did you make good contacts along the way? Because the article that I read um, by Ben Tinsley, I thought was very, um, I, I thought that you were, you had a very progressive mindset for that time because as of current, um, the barrier protection issue is something that's a very hot topic in the pornographic news sphere as is um, 
Well, 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 there's quite a few issues that you touched on on that article, and I will link that article up on PornNewsToday.com. But um, you were concerned about the STD rate. Um, was that something that um, you remember being in the forefront of your mind at that time? Or? Yeah, I remember. I mean, when I got into the adult business and stuff, yeah, I, I really I did enjoy it. I really didn't feel was a lot of negative stuff when I was into the porn movies and stuff, but the part of uh, AIDS and things like that, and there is a case of a couple of people in the business that have caught AIDS and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go and you get like your, your test done and stuff like that before you go shoot the movie. Say I can go and get my blood work done and two or three days before I shoot the movie, I can go have sex with other people and this and that. They go on set and shoot, and all of a sudden they catch them. So I cited as a name when I was in the business, I wanted to start using condoms. And they were like, at that time, it was like, why? That's like losing the fantasy of doing porno movies, seeing, you know, on film with condoms. So mm -hmm. I had to deal with that big issue of that for the longest time. Yeah, that was a, a big issue, and that's what made me get out of doing the adult stuff. But I was traveling around on the road. I was a featured dancer. Oh, you know, oh. I made good, good money being on the road, being you know, the big main star that draw people in and stuff like that, which was really cool. So I got to be around my band touch them, do lap dances, and things like that. But then they approached me and go, Sunset, I would love to have sex with you. I'm like, well, I can't do that. It's legal, you know? I'll come to my hotel and have sex with me. I was like, no, 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 I can't do this. Right. So I decided, well, I got, at the time, the husband I was married to, my first one at the time, I said, well, you know, this is kind of cool. I wonder if there's a brothel that I can go to and I can go out and have sex with my fan. Mm -hmm. So it's funny, uh, starting out, actually, I went to the chicken ranch. And I went out there with my husband at the time. They wouldn't allow him to walk in with me. So the woman came out in here and goes, well, I have this adult film star. So it's not very famous. They would like to come and start working at your bra. So anyway, we went out there to the chick ranch. And uh, he was letting them know, hey, I got this adult star. in the car. I'd like to come in and talk to you guys and be able to come to work at your place and be with their fans. Well, we don't want more stars here. So I was like, oh, now what am I going to do? And then all my fans kept begging me, begging me, wanting to hook up. So I hooked up with Ron Jeremy. And I talked to him because we were friends. I knew the adult business. And I said, Ronnie, I want to find a brothel where I can go. I can be with my fans. He goes, well, I'll hook you up with Dennis Hall. And we sit down. We had a big dinner. And I brought my mom with me and everything, you know. I mean, and my mom's cool about what I do. She's not for it, but she's there, you know. She was understanding. So, yeah. So anyway, we went and had a big meeting with him. And he goes, well, you know, the brothels are really not allowed to promote the ranches. They had time back then. They were very hush hush on promoting. I said, but I'm Sunset Thomas. I can go on all these big talk shows and radio shows and just not promote it, just like I promote all the dance clubs I'm at, my upcoming movies and things like that. And then it's kind of like, hmm, that's a good thought. You're right. So, of course, he was thinking better that to make my place popular. Yes, you can. So that's when I started going on Howard Stern and all these other times. Oh, Sunset looks great. <laughs> Beautiful body. All done up. Great outfit, honey. She's sparkling today. You're Hi, double Howard. A. How you doing, sweetheart? Hi, Robin. How Hi, you been? been? Good. Double A, how's that? <laughs> huh? Yeah. What do you think of that? Sweet. You'd like to win that, right? Hey, Definitely. <laughs> he wants you real bad, Sunset Thomas, but he can't have you unless he beats the juice. You got to beat the juice. You got to beat the juice. Bunny ranch, bunny ranch, bunny ranch. Now, oh, yeah. Can I interject and ask you a question? Sure. Were you compensated for all of that promotion that you were doing at that time? No, ma'am, I was not. Okay. No, no. See, that's what I read in the article, and that's something that really um, sent up a huge red flag for me, because if it weren't for you, I really don't believe that the Nevada legal brothel system would have gained the popularity that it's gained over the years. And, you know, just to hear that you've walked away from that with just a very small amount of money in an account, to me, is just despicable. No, I didn't get nothing from any of that stuff. Okay. I got a lot of headaches, but we'll go on on, on, on that later on. But, and, uh, and I didn't even get, uh, I didn't even get paid when I was doing the HBO Cat House stuff. Really? I did not, and uh, towards the end when they wanted me to come back, at the end where I've had seen Dennis in all these years since I've been away from him stuff, mm -hmm. and I said, the only way I'll do that, you guys got to pay me to go in there. Just to do this last little interview, they wanted us to finally meet again. That's yeah. the only one I ever got paid for off. All that crap I did. And wow. all that promotion, all these radio shows, radio, uh, radio interviews, TV shows, or Chelsea Lately, I mean, all these shows. I didn't get a damn thing for it. I mean, now, how many years in total were you working in the Nevada brothel system? 
I even pat her on the back and just saying, hey, thank you, Sunset. Hey, you rocked it. You know, help me in my place properly. None of that. But I'm sorry. What were you saying? It's okay. I'm bit. <laughs> How many years in total were you in the brothel system? Oh, God, let me think. Wait. How many years in do you think it was okay. that you started to realize that something was wrong? Like, how many years do you think you were in to where you started to kind of look around and think to yourself, you know, I'm being taken advantage of? Uh, I would say in 2000, well, let's see. Right when I actually started uh, being more involved and knowing more what was going on, it's, it's probably right when I was actually starting to live with Dennis. They, okay. I actually lived with him for two years. I got to start seeing more things. You know, I was around it. I was in the office. I got to see a lot more things than most people would see. And mm -hmm. then that's when I started realizing I didn't really like this stuff as much anymore. And, and how Dennis all of a sudden would change. I mean, his attitude on camera and stuff like, oh, he's just Mr. Goody Two-Shoes. He's just teaching so great and this, that. Full hockey behind the closed doors. I mean, it's not all what people think it's up to be. And, you know, and I, that's when it really started to get to me. Started to on you. Yeah when I started seeing more of that and him promised me certain things and I had my children with me at the time and they were staying at separate houses and he'd sit there and promise this and that and buy things for my kids like my oldest son he bought him a dog and then turned around and took the dog back away from him took my kids trampoline took out to the ranch for the girls to jump on and everything and I was like dude these are my kids stuff you know and just a lot of things start coming out more about him how he would just you'd go to dinner meetings with him or out doing interviews and one thing would come out of his mouth and it's actually another. He's always lying, lying, lying. I'd be at dinner meetings sometimes and he'd hit me really hard under my leg and stuff. Oh. Just shut up and not talk and not talk for myself, which I was always used to talking for myself, you know, that's why it was a big thing before I got with him. And that started getting on my nerves, you know, it started to wear me down, you know, and I mean, it just, well, it was cool. Um, now let's backtrack a little bit. How? And when did you um, meet Dennis? How did you come into contact with them? How did you two decide to team up? That's when we uh, hooked up with, uh, with Ron Jeremy and we all went out for a dinner meeting. I think that was back in, I to think, 2000 or maybe before 2000, somewhere around in there. And that's when we, I was still married to my first husband. Okay. And I got there and uh, started working for him and then, uh, he was working with me on the side, you know, he had another girlfriend at the time, and he'd be constantly pinching and grabbing my butt and stuff like that, and making moves on me, and at the time I was still married, you know, typical dentist, you know, doing all that, and then, then I uh, I was young and dumb, didn't put that with the player at all, you know, he really loves me, you know, you know, I was young and dumb at the time. Well, you weren't dumb, you were naive, and he was very sophisticated from what you're, from how it sounds, from my perspective. And well, it, I knew I was scared, too, because I... I actually, right when we got together and I was getting ready to move in with him, when I was, but I was still working for him when I was married, I separated from my first husband because it was a very abusive relationship. So he saw that side of me, he saw this very fragile, very scared little girl, and he knew, ha ha, even though she's this huge name, oh, I can take advantage of this, you know, because I was very vulnerable. I was scared, you know. Let's talk about. The, the first day that you ever worked in the Nevada legal brothel system, which specific brothel did you start out in? Well, I started at, at Moonlight Bunny Ranch, and uh, I'm scared to death when I first went there. It was just, it was weird. It was just different, you know, and knowing you're going to be naked in your pants and having sex with them. And, I mean, I, I was scared out of my mind. I literally was my first day there. You know, I didn't know exactly what to do or, you know, I was brand new at it all, you know, so I kind of just went by what they told me what to do when I first went there. Right. So I had you know, I Now, scared. like, before you were ever with your first client in that particular brothel, at any point did you say to yourself, you know what, I want to run, I don't want to do this. Did that thought ever come through your mind, or did you just go into complete self-preservation mode? Because I know how I felt the first time I ever did in a, um, a porn movie, and I know that feeling. But what was what was your thought process? No, I, I didn't want to get away from it. No, mm -hmm. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't think that at all. I was just like a little nervous on 
Um, I got approached by my guy or my band that couldn't want to see me. And more than anything, I was, I was more nervous, scared, but excited. Could you tell me a little bit about the difference between the multitude of brothels and the Nevada system? Uh, the one thing I like about going to the different brothels is that the owners didn't grow up on their brothels. They didn't have their girls' butts and their tits and things like that. They didn't make you feel like you had to screw them to be there to work with that life. Now, was that Dennis Hoff's um, behavior? What, was he, you know, sexually harassing the girls? Oh, uh, it was totally the opposite. I mean, you can even see some of that on HBO. Always grabbing his girls, always grabbing their tits. I mean, I've had some girls say the reason why they left the ranch is because this was sitting there and say to them, well, if you don't screw me, then get out of here. I mean, wow. they didn't have that pressure on these girls that they're like, well, okay, if I don't fuck my boss, then that means I can't work here. I mean, I'm here to work to make my money for sure, make it happen, but off of me anyway. Why well, don't I have to screw you? I mean, some girls, to the point they felt so uncomfortable, they left. And that's why I like to buy going to the different brothels. Because they weren't like that. The owners didn't grow up and do all that. According to Diane, a.k.a. Sunset Thomas's book, a woman frequently seen with Dennis Hoff today, known as Caressa, at one stage left his brothel for his competition, the Kit Kat Ranch. It, it was, was true. Caressa had done the unthinkable. She'd walked out on the Bunny Ranch and moved over to the competition. The word was that she was making some serious money, doing lots of public appearances, and was happier than ever. Sure, plenty of girls had left the Bunny Ranch, but they'd also left town. Caressa was the first high-profile working girl to just move down the block, or in this case, across the street, to another brothel. She showed everyone it was the girl, not Dennis Hoff, or the Bunny Ranch that was responsible for her success. Caressa and I have been friends. Like me, she was the mother of two and had on occasion babysat Zach and Aaron. When I called Caressa, she was cautious and evasive. I'm sure she figured that Dennis was somehow using me to get to her, and so my initial attempts at small talk were mostly met with silence. But when I played Dennis's messages to her over the phone, her suspicions quickly gave way to a sort of sisterhood. Recognizing that I was in a crisis situation, the fiery little Texas blonde immediately offered to arrange a meeting for Mama and me with the owners of the Kit Kat Ranch. So, you know, this is interesting to me because, it, you know, I've heard the rumors that, you know, you're, you're so down on adult entertainment, you're so down on everything, but really you're not. It just sounds to me like you had an incredibly horrific experience with Dennis Hoff and his particular establishments. Of course, no, I'm not down on any of it. I mean, I'm just saying that when you get to the point where you want to get out of it, then you should be able to get out of it and not be forced to have to stay in it, them drugging you up. I mean, I don't even really talk to a lot of people that have been in that business. There's only a couple of them that are still very dear, dear friends of mine that I will talk to, like Nina Hartley. I love her to death. She fights okay. for women's rights and things like that. She is just awesome. She's wonderful. Uh, Larry Clint, he's always been like a father figure to me. He's always been good to me. But there's a lot of people I will not associate in that business because – I feel when I get kind of close to them, then they're trying to drag me back in there. All right, now I want to talk a little bit about the men in your life while you were working in the brothel system. Now, I know that you were um, with Dennis for a while. Tell me about your inter – when you first went into the brothel system, who were you dating or who were you married to? Who were you with? Well, I was with my first husband. Okay. And we were together, I believe, uh, 10 years, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, he started getting jealous, knowing that me and Dennis were kind of flirting and hanging on each other while I was still married to him, working at the Bunny Ranch. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we kind of hooked up because I got to the point where I got tired of getting beat up by my first husband. Mm. It was rocky. I mean, a lot of people in the porn business that know me from the business would sit there and say, this girl seems like she's forced and doing a lot of stuff, even in the porn stock, before I got into the brothel. Okay. Because he was very pushy about me. He would, like, sneak over, and I'd be literally asleep in a hotel, and he'd bring four guys over, and I'd wake up, and here they are, butt naked, and he goes, now screw up. I'm like, excuse me? Uh, oh, my uh, God. And he'd make me feel bad or guilty or beat the living shit out of me because I wouldn't do that. 
So, I mean, I was kind of already rocky with my uh, marriage, but then um, towards the end, it was right around, actually, it was 9-11. That was it. It threw the line. He was in the military. I just got tired and beat me up like crazy. It just had a, my second son. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I get knock, knock, knock at the door. And I look through Pico at my door, and there's two black dudes standing up there. I mean, big, muscle black dudes standing up there. And then all of a sudden, my husband gets on the phone. My first husband gets on the phone and says, I have these two guys at the door right now. I want you to fuck them right now. I'm like, I got both my kids here, a newborn, upstairs. And you want me to invite these two black guys in to screw me? And not just because they're black. I mean, I don't care if they're white, yellow, green, purple. You know, the fact that the whole situation. And and it's 9-11. So I'm already freaking out, thinking the world's coming to an end. And this is all he wants me to do is screw these two black guys. And I was like, I'm not letting them in. I called the cops to come over because I hope they could leave. He got so mad at me, got pissed that when he come, he lit the shit out of me. And I, I it, it, it's over. I was scared. At the time, I was so beat up, so bruised. I called Dennis and says, I'm headed up to you. So I headed off down towards Reno. Okay. And I figured once I got there, got my head together, I'd come back with my kids. And then my kids got kidnapped. On top of lives of Dennis. I went through a lot of stuff with a lot of men. According to Diane, life while she was with Dennis Hoff and after she left Dennis Hoff was a literal hell on earth. I decided to leave, uh, oh God, what was that? In 2003, I believe, is when I, I, yeah, 2003. Okay. And when I did leave, my, uh, my kids were living there in another one of his house with my mother. And at the time when I said I wanted to leave, he threatened to burn my mother and the kids in the house. Yeah. So that's when I got involved when I went to his competition to the Kit Kat Ranch and got the owner there with Jack and uh, Frank. And they decided, Sunset, we'll hide you out, get you back into Vegas, which I always kept my big, beautiful house there in Vegas, and get you guys where you're safe. I actually had a live-in bodyguard that lived with me for a year. That's how scared and nervous I was and literally threatening my life and my children and my mother's life. I mean... Now, where were the police and all this? Did you file a report? Were Sir did he intimidate you into not filing a report? What was happening? I, at the time, I, just was, I was like, no, I was scared. I was nervous. I wanted to just get the hell out of there. Dummy should have went ahead and found a place to support at the time, but I didn't. But I did start dealing with going to, uh, he was taking me to court a lot. And then all of a sudden, I pulled out this big box, and I had tapes that Dennis, when he would call me, and you know when you call your, on someone's cell phone and you leave a message, it's being recorded, correct? Yes, yes. I kept everything that he actually left on this, and I have tapes of him still today. Diane has played for me the tapes that she's kept over the years, which are allegedly of Dennis Hoff threatening her, and I can tell you all firsthand that they are terrifying. Diane's book, The Naked Truth, includes transcriptions of the various horrific messages that Dennis Hoff left her. Here's an example of just one of them. Quit the bullshit. Stop. Okay? And answer your phone because I don't think I'm going to leave many more messages. You're going to answer the phone or that's it. And if you think you like got to me or something because you are showing me how it is, you're not a fucking man. You're a bitch. Okay? That's what you're being. Be a nice girl. Stop trying to be smart. You're not as smart as me. You'll never be. Okay? Get it down. Be a girl. Be what you're supposed to be, nice and fun, okay? And that's one thing I think why he keeps threatening me and bothering me because I do have proof of this and his voice is saying these things. Okay. All right, yeah. so he is threatening you, your mother, your children, everything. And this is in 2003. You're trying to get away. At what point, uh, well, well, who was helping you? Was anyone helping you at this point in time? At the time, I actually, uh, that's when I'm, um, Kent Wallace just left the uh, Bunny Ranch, mm-hmm. and he was working at the Kit Kat Ranch with actually at the time the another uh, working girl, which is now at back at the Bunny Ranch. I don't want to say her name right now. Okay. But anyway, um, they helped me get over there and introduced me to the people that own the Kit Kat Ranch, okay. and they helped me get away from all that kind of stuff. I'm a publicist and a marketing guy. This is Kent, a man who Diane was in a long-term relationship with. He claims to be a publicist, but he seems more like a pimp. More as the publicist than the husband. I will get Sunset Thomas to lick your 
bolts and polish your wood, you sign on to this thing. I sort of can't let her get soft. It's only gonna get it's worse. Not easy. I know over the next couple of months it's gonna get very hey, mommy. I know, it's gonna get tougher over the course of the next couple of months, but you knew that kind of going in, baby, so come on now, be tough. Then after I left Dennis, then my second husband, then, uh, well, first I dated the owner that, that owned the Kit Kat Ranch. Okay. okay. Very good man. Awesome. I love him still today. I love him to death. He died of cancer. Oh, and God. we lived together for two years. We were gonna get married and everything. He gave me a big coffee before we were gonna get married. I haven't took us off since he died. It's been like, God, uh, but seven years now, seven or eight years. So anyway, but then again, here I am. I'm all weak again, not knowing what I'm going to do. Jack died, and I wasn't working anymore. You know, we we owned a couple of gentlemen clubs. We bought out a bunch of those. We had one in Carson, then one in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. So here I was loving owning a strip club now. You know, so getting out of the brothel, even though he owned a brothel. So then he died. So I'm vulnerable. I'm scared to death. And there's Kent. He was working. He did work at the Bunny Ranch, left the Bunny Ranch, went to the Kit Kat, worked for them, being the provinces. So he saw me as a sucker, and I still had, you know, lots of money and stuff. And he took advantage of me and grabbed me, and then him and his daughter was going to get kicked out of their home because Jack passed away, lived at Jack's house, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I let them both and stay with me in Vegas. Then I ended up getting suckered into marrying him because I just felt scared. I felt like, oh, I can't do this on my own, you know. And, I've always had men in my life, so I didn't think I could live this world by myself, you know, so I was scared. Then got with him. Then he started drinking a lot. Then he uh. started, started hitting me around a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was still to the point where I was trying to, to get things figured out. And Jack left me with some money. And he was constantly just get, constantly and just beating off of Jack's money. So, uh, anyway, I... Uh, and I started drinking, and I just started drinking with him because I just couldn't take it. So yeah. we'd go to bars all the time. We were gambling a lot. I lived there in Vegas, and I would just drink and drink and drink. I became an alcoholic. You were self-medicating to deal with all of the um, drama, the abuse, all that, you know, psychological, physical. Now, at what point um, did your current man come into the picture? Oh, it's okay. Uh, okay, this was in, uh, it was right, right after Christmas, uh, about two years ago. Um, my son actually went to go and uh, stay at my stepdaughter's house. This was right around Christmas time, and it was my, the husband I was with. Um, we decided to get a hotel right after Christmas, and it's time just us. He uh, took me to the hotel and beat the living shit out of me right after Christmas. Beat me up really, really hard. Okay. And as soon as we left, we went back home. We went to the bar, of course. Started drinking more. I got to know the bar owner there, and she said, now you can talk. She goes, what's wrong with you? You get out of your heart. So I raised up my own shirt. I couldn't breathe. So that's when I was already becoming friends with Robert. And that's when I called him Brett. The Robert did me. I can't walk, mm -hmm. I can't move. So the owner there said, oh, I'll just tell Kate you went to score to get cigarettes. Call in a cab right now. You take off and you, you, you get out of here, girl. So I did, and I called Robert and said, I don't know what to do. And he said, just go get you a hotel somewhere. And, and um, what I did was say, if anyone calls and asks for me, I'm not here, you know, and I took them really good, so they wouldn't, so if someone asked for my name, I was there, and I just gave them a certain code, so when Robert called, he knew how to call to the room, and knew where I was at, knew I was, you know, somewhere safe, until he got there, he got on the places he could to, to get me out of that situation, and then and, um, a week later, I, I came back to get my youngest son, which he is still today, is in counseling, it's been about two years now. So it's me and Robert's been together, and he was beaten and choking on my son too as well. So that was hard. That was rough. So Robert was like an angel. He came in, and then it was just like, 
he didn't care about the skimpy dresses and just I don't even remember the last time I put on a pair of high heels to be honest with you. I'm just so me again now. I'm just happy country girl. We got horses now. We love to ride. I mean I'm just my old me. He well, took me back yeah. to see my family and I haven't seen my brothers and sisters in God probably twelve years. They're like, Man, thanks for bringing my sis back, back to me. I mean literally he brought me back to my little family and stuff. I mean I was becoming Diane again. And I like being Diane. I like Diane a lot more. I, I, I didn't really know Sunset Thomas. You know, you and I just really started communicating. But I like Diane a lot. And Diane is someone who I hope to call a friend for, you know, right. hopefully the rest of my life. Because Diane is a really strong, beautiful, courageous person who um, I really admire. And I think a lot of women who have worked within the adult entertainment arena, whether they be a dancer or um, a porn star or a um, legal courtesan or maybe an illegal courtesan, but I think that a lot of women are going to relate especially to what you just said. And thank you for not cutting this off when you started to get emotional there. And that's why I mean, this is why I like this, these kind of interviews because mm -hmm. I want people to, to see what I have went through. I mean, I, and like I'm saying, I'm not saying that this business is is bad, but it's just when it gets to the point where you don't want to do it anymore and this and that, then don't force us to keep doing it. Don't drug us up and keep us in here. That's so right. There's not Roberts out there. Unless, unless Robert's going to close himself. <laughs> There's not enough Roberts, and when we want to leave, we need to be able to leave and be safe and not be stalked, which is what we'll get into when we do our next installment of this interview. And of course, by everyone got more out there, to tell you. I got more Robert to tell you. Because yeah, but here I, I got my here I got my Prince Charming, and now he's going through the same crap as I am with Dennis. So, but that'd be on another segment, and I'm all teary eyed right now. So. Well, thank you for oh, hanging in there, next. and um, you, you know, you you made it through the final stretch. You uh, did. Don't get the book though. It really is going to tell so much. It, it's going to make you really. You're going to get in there, and you're going to get into my heart. You're really going to see uh, a lot of stuff that I've been through, and I think this book is really important for my fans out there and those who are not fans. There. They're going to get it, and they're going to understand it. And it's really important. I hope my eyes are not all black on you. No, you look great. Uh -huh. I mean, <laughs> you look good. This, is, this, this was, this was um, very difficult. This was, I know this was yeah. incredibly difficult for you. I know it was. So, everyone, make sure that you look for the next installment um, of this interview series. I'm going to have them all linked up on Porn News Today, Monica at Home, Sunset will have these on her website, on her Twitter. Um, so look, look for the next one very shortly. I'm going to try to edit these and bang them out as soon as I possibly humanly can. Thank but, you. Um, so, and like I said, you know, uh, you've got more out of me than anyone has. And I'm just getting to the point where I'm just tired of being so, so quiet. And I want to speak out because, you know, I've been really good for a lot of crap that Dennis has put me through and a lot of crap that he said negative about me. And, like, when I've done the interviews, I'd go, when someone would ask me a question about Dennis, I'd go, like my mama says, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say that at all. Well, I'm getting tired of being quiet now. Well, it's he hasn't like, been very nice. Speak out. Let's I know. Keep it real. But I was trying to be the cool one and say, hey, I'm just trying to go on with my life. I'm just being Diane now and living a normal life. But he just won't let it be, and it's like enough's enough. And I'm tired of being quiet. Now it's time for me to speak out, you know. So it is. just like on my Twitter, I mean, when fans still every now and then you get one, oh, let me see your boobs, let me see this stuff. Go get one of my old pornos. Go get one of my magazines. On my Twitter, you're gonna see more about what's going on in my life now. Me riding my horses, things like that. I am a normal everyday girl. Still love my fans. Not gonna hide under the rock, but don't ask to see my boobies. Look at one of my porno movies if you want to see that. Or exactly. one of my Kid House magazines or Playboy, you know. Well, I am very excited to speak with your man, Robert, next time because he has been tremendous in regards to helping you heal and helping you return to Diane. So, really 
All right. We'll say goodbye to everyone, and we'll see you all again very soon. See you soon.